Hello again, thanks for joining me in another video. I'm gonna be doing another Quicken Mac video here. I am simply gonna go over the account bar in Mac, the left account bar, and sort of walk you through that and explain to you what you're looking at so that it will make sense. So when you start to read the data, it shows you. All right, see you in there, thanks. I'm Joe DeSanto, by the way. I'm an independent CFO and business consultant. I actually spent most of my career in Los Angeles building a few multi-million dollar businesses, and I've since semi-retired, and now I help other uh, businesses and individuals manage their money and plan better for their future. So if you're interested in small business, personal finance, and real estate advice, please subscribe to the channel. Thanks. Okay, so. Another Quick and Mac video here. Uh, we're looking at Quick and Mac, as you can see. Uh, if you're following along from the original uh, bank connection video, you're going to see some of the same connected banks. I actually have some other test accounts in here as well. But really, what I wanted to go over was this left account bar in general. So the account bar here is, uh, as it sort of says, it's it's where all your accounts that you enter get collected. Okay, and you can you know minimize it or not minimize it. But there's a couple things about it that I think are worth pointing out. Number one, and the main thing is this account bar obviously shows you the balances of the accounts that you have in here, but it then shows you a total of the balances of those accounts. This total really is your net worth. So with Quicken, kind of the two ultimate things we look at as we look at our, our uh, cash flow report or profit and loss, you might call it, or income statement, you might, might call it. And that is a report that I'm, um, takes all the data that we've put in, income and expense data and transfers and everything, and turns it into something readable as in, this was the income you made, this is how much you spent and what you spent it on, and this is the net result, positive or negative. So that, on an ongoing basis, like monthly or annually, we're getting information about our income and expense. The other main financial, uh, factor that we're pulling out of Quicken is what is our current net worth. So if we add up the value of all of our checking accounts, savings accounts, what we owe on our credit cards, how much we have in our brokerage accounts or retirement accounts or anything like that. If we own a home, how much is the home worth? Less how much do we owe on the home? So in effect, we add the home's equity in there. We can have other assets in there. I actually have a client who owns a gold bar. We have their gold bar in the accounts list in Quicken and the value of that. And once you get all your accounts in here and you have all the accurate account um, values, it's gonna give you a net worth. It's some total of all your assets, even both liquid and in form of equity or stocks or whatever. Now, right now, this is just a temp file with lots of temp accounts and a few different things. Uh, so this is a negative number and it's not great. I mean, for some people that is a negative number. If you are, you know, young and you just have student loans and a car loan and you haven't saved much, um, obviously as you get older, you hope that gets out of the red, goes into the black and finds its way up to a nice healthy number. What that healthy number should be, you can figure that out. I actually have a course on that called the Financial Independence Roadmap where I help you figure out what that healthy number should be for down the road. But anyway, th that's what this account bar is kind of telling us. So it's important that we, you know, one, these are accurate but, uh, so we can get that number. But two, we want to decide what we're showing on here. So Quicken gives you some options about what you can show on the account bar. And if you go into settings, and you go to sidebar, okay, you have some different options of what you can see. Uh, you can put either today's balances on the accounts, or you could put the projected balances on there, or the online balances on there. Sometimes those things are always the, are all the same. But uh, if you watch the connected bank account video, we talked about the fact that when we download our transactions and everything, we end up with a balance for uh, what's in the register in Quicken and a sum total of that. 
but we also have the balance that's online in our bank. Usually those two things are equal. But if we start to enter stuff into Quicken that's like in the future, right? Like say uh, we put in uh, for November 1, 2024, mortgage payment, right? And say that's $3,000 a month. Well, now our balance here, our future balance in this account goes down to 18,9997. Now, if we had over here projected balances on, you see what we show here is the future balance. I generally have it on today's balance, but the future balance can give you a little bit uh, like you, you, you know, load in a bunch of transactions that are coming through your bank account in the next couple of weeks, and then you can see what you're going to have after the fact. So it gives you that option. Now, also, you see here these different sections. Uh, the Quicken, quick, the Quicken, Quicken breaks things down generally into banking, which is your checking and savings and credit cards accounts or cash accounts. Uh, now, you see business here. It's because we have the home and business version. You may or may not have that, but so I'm going to get to that last. The next thing is investing, which would be your brokerage and retirement accounts. And the next thing is property and debt, which is usually like your home, your home loan. If you did have that gold bar, that would be an other asset that would be down in here. But as you can see, it sub breaks the headings down into like, OK, under banking, we have a checking account. We have a savings account. I'm going to go ahead and put in uh, a credit card account just for the this purpose. Test credit card. 24. And it has another subheading called test credit card now, right? Because I just put that in. Um, investing breaks it down into brokerage accounts and retirement accounts. And really what this means is, is these are taxable accounts and these are tax deferred or tax affected or retirement accounts. Uh, property and debt. So here I have a test debt for a mortgage. I'm going to say, um, by the way, this house value house value uh, test, test asset increase 300,000 okay so over here now I have a property with an asset value of 300 but I got two loans on it now look what happened to my net worth it actually went up now that I got the house value in there so back to the settings uh, over here, the other options are is we can uh, choose to have the account balances just generally showing or not. I don't know why you wouldn't have this on. I always do. But you could have the group balances, which is like the top, you know, grouping here. You can have those on. I'm going to put this thing over here. You can also have the subgroup balances on if you want, but to me that gets really like, I don't know, hard to read. Um, and then you can have the total on or off down below. You can show sense or not. I always show sense. So you can choose to have a few things on or not. I definitely have, I don't have subgroup balances on. I have account balances and group balances. Now, foreign balances and home currency, if you happen to have an account, you can have accounts in Quicken that are not in USD. You can have them be in other accounts. And the way it works is you set up the checking account. You say it's a different currency. I'm sorry, not accounts, different currency. And in the register, it'll show the currency of the account that you chose. I don't know, maybe that's euros. But over here in the total balances and in your reports, it will always convert that to USD value based on the currency conversion that's in Quicken. Quicken has a, a list of currencies that it will update the a conversion rate on automatically. But if you have an account that you need to put in that is not in that list, you'll have to manually put in that currency conversion and periodically update it. Um, so uh, that's what that is, but we're not seeing that here. And then over here, you can have accounts to display, closed, hidden, or separate. So accounts, once you put them in, they're basically, they're viewable and they're not closed. They're open and they're viewable. However, over time, 
you might close an account, right? And inevitably the account balance goes to zero and then you don't wanna see that account anymore so you might hide it in the list, okay? If you do that, it disappears. But you could choose to have hidden counts on and it will come down here if you wanted. Uh, I'm gonna turn that off now and show you another one. So another option is Sometimes you want to have accounts that are separate, meaning if it's separate, it'll show up in the list, but it won't be part of your net worth total. So I have an account for my son that's, you know, college fund. I don't consider that money our money anymore because we've given it to him. It's actually in a trust so we couldn't even take it back. And so I, but I track that account, but I keep it separate from my other accounts. So in that case, I would come over here and I would keep the separate ones on and it would be down here underneath the subtotal, okay? Uh, so that it's not part of your net worth if you don't want it to be. I don't like the fact that Mac that the separate accounts are that down far down below, but you know, whatever. Uh, the other option is you close an account. So you come over here and you say mark account as closed. And then it says, are you sure you want to mark this account as closed? Make an account closed. We'll set the account to zero, blah, 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 blah. You don't generally want to mark an account as closed until you've zeroed it out yourself. But it does like, you know, just officially make the account not accessible on something. I actually don't close accounts because sometimes I want to go back into them and, and having them closed can make things a little annoying in that way. So I just... Uh, zero accounts out and then I hide them and then I don't have the uh, you know zeroed out hidden accounts show up on the bar so that's what those are uh, and then account activity indicators see this little blue button here this means that there are downloaded transactions in here that are new. Now, this blue button actually doesn't mean new. It means unreviewed. But transactions are generally only unreviewed when they're new. But Quicken gives you this option to show a highlight when it only has new transactions. Because I might download uh, transactions, not review them yet, and then go do a bunch of other things and come back the next day, and technically they're not new anymore. So this blue thing will be gone. So I like to have it as highlight accounts with unreviewed transactions, so I know that there's stuff in there that I gotta like go through and categorize and so on. Okay, so that is the account bar overview and the functions of that. Uh, we'll see you in the next one. Have a good day.